Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another episode of the Azeroth Arsenal. This is a series that goes over the history of some of the more iconic weapons of World of Warcraft, both in-game and out-of-game. For this one, I wanted to go over the old Hunter vanilla weapons that had epic quest chains tied behind them, and that's the Bow Rochtalar and the Staff Loctalar, and also a bonus quiver. I was going to save these for my Time Warp series since you can no longer obtain them, but I thought that they'd fit this series better. These were rewarded after completing a very unique set of quests. They've all been removed since the Cataclysm expansion, along with tons of other stuff, so I thought it would be interesting to cover them in their entirety. As we know, everything is a hunter weapon, but these were actually hunter weapons. They're very iconic in the game's history. And, just like the previous episode with Thunder Fury, they even got their own special cards in the official trading card game. How? Well, let me tell you all about it. Let's start with the lore and history of the weapons. It all starts in the demon-infested forest, Felwood. Long ago, this was a normal serene forest, much like its neighboring zone, Ashenvale. But, during the Third War, it was corrupted and twisted by the Dreadlord, Tychondrius, and turned into what it is today. He used a familiar artifact, the Skull of Gul'dan, to desecrate the once beautiful forest. It corrupted the trees, wildlife, and lakes, and turned the zone into a putrid green color. Another casualty were the mighty Ancients of Felwood. These are the giant tree ants that you rarely see in the game. As mighty as they were, they too fell victim to Tychondrius' corruption and became petrified. The Third War eventually ended with the Legion's defeat, but many of these Ancients were lost forever. However, they did leave behind a special item, the Ancient Petrified Leaf. This was a quest starter, usable by hunters only, and it was the beginning of an epic set of trials to obtain these powerful weapons. Prior to the release of the Blackwing Lair Raid, these were THE hunter weapons to have. Not only were they powerful, but they were also sort of a status symbol for a while. You didn't just have to kill a raid boss, but you also had to go through those trials and tests of skill that could only be completed solo. Although, as you'll see, there were some tricks that you could do to cheese it. Not even getting into the trials yet, just getting this leaf was pretty tough for a while. It dropped from the chest that spawns after the Major Domo Executus fight in the Molten Core raid. He was the second to last boss in the raid, so during that tier, killing him was no easy feat. It of course wasn't guaranteed to drop, and as you would imagine, only one hunter in the raid would be the lucky recipient. And using it would start a quest to find the owner of the leaf. That was it. No other information was given. Imagine not using Wowhead or Thoughtbot at the time and scouring this giant world for the owner of this leaf. There were no question mark icons on the map back then, so that itself would have been a monumental challenge had it not been for these handy database websites or word of mouth from other hunters who already found the owner. Well, the owner turned out to be the spirits of some of those petrified ancients in the Felwood zone I mentioned earlier only visible to hunters who hold the leaf. They seek revenge against the Burning Legion, specifically four agents hiding in four corners of the world. And, if you would be their instrument of their wrath, you would be rewarded with these weapons that quote, the likes of which have not been seen for 10,000 years. Well, who could say no to that? So, returning the leaf to them opened up three quests, the Stave of the Ancients, a proper string, and the ancient sinew-wrapped lamina. So, going over them one by one, saving the demon portions for last, the latter quest required you to bring back a mature blue dragon sinew, and as a reward, you got an epic 18 slot quiver that gave you a 15% ranged attack speed bonus. Remember, this was back when hunters used ammo for their weapons. Since this created some inventory problems, they also had quivers, typically of a larger capacity, so that their bags were in full all the time. These quivers and ammo pouches also gave attack speed bonuses, sort of like an unequipped piece of gear which was pretty interesting. So, where did you get this in you? It dropped from Azergos at a 100% rate. He was an old world boss, now also removed from the game. You could instead farm appropriate level blue dragonkin enemies and they would drop it as well, of course at a much lower rate. And if you didn't want to farm at all, you could just buy it off of the auction house since it wasn't bound on pickup. Quite expensive though. The next quest, a proper string, required you to bring back an item called the mature Black Dragon Sinew. This dropped off of the raid boss Anixia 
at around a 30-ish percent drop rate, which wasn't too bad. At this point, if you already got the leaf from Major Domo, your guild had Anixia on farm. Plus, a nice bonus was that you could even get the Sinu even if you didn't have the quest, so a lot of the time, you were ready to complete this quest as soon as you accepted it. And in similar fashion to the blue Sinu, alternatively, you could get this from appropriate level Black Drakes. Once again though, much more rare. Anyways, this quest awarded the Enchanted Black Dragon Sinew, which was a component needed to complete the bow and staff. This leads us to the most in-depth quest out of the three, the Stave of the Ancients, which gave you the Ancient Runech Stave, which when combined with the Enchanted Sinew, gave you the actual weapon. To complete this part, you needed to track down four demons and kill them. Simone the Seductress in the Ungoro Crater, Clinfran the Crazed in the Burning Steps, Solonar the Slayer in Silithus, and Artorius the Doombringer in Winterspring. And you had to do it all solo. No help from any other player was allowed. If someone jumped in, the demon would call you a coward and despawn before your very eyes. Not even your pet was allowed, so oh well to all of those beast mastery hunters, I guess. So, items like target dummies and pet summoning trinkets were all a no-no, and you always had the risk of another unknowing adventurer ruining everything because they were just trying to help. They were all disguised as neutral NPCs wandering about these zones, and you had to track each of them down and engage them solo. They each provided their own unique challenge. Not having played a hunter back then, I'll briefly try to cover them as best I can. The Winter Spring Demon, Artorius, enraged periodically and casted a dot on you. You had to kite him for the whole fight, like every boss as you'll see. You could dispel his enrage with Tranquilizing Shot, and he took 350% more damage from Serpent Sting, so you always wanted to have that active on him. The next one, Simone, was a little tougher because she had a pet with her as well. She reduced your attack power, and also casted a spell that did a high amount of damage to you, so cutting was seemingly out of the question here. Luckily though, your Viper Sting had a bonus effect. It silenced her, which made her kiteable. So, the strategy for her was to ice trap her pet, keep a Viper Sting on her, and kite her when you can. Her melee damage was pretty weak, so meleeing her down was also an option as long as you kept her pet trapped. The next one was Clinfren in the Burning Steps. This guy also had an Enrage which made him deal monster damage, but his weakness was if he was afflicted by Scorpid Sting, he would only deal one damage in melee combat. So, you wanted to keep that up as much as possible, and kite him when you could. So, no room for error with this guy. The hardest one, however, was Solonar from Silithus. He would cast a fear on you, as well as homing beetles that hit very hard. And if he got in melee range, he would burn you down very quickly. His weakness was tied to wing clip. Normally, this just slowed enemies, but Solonar was also immobilized for 30 seconds. So for this fight, you had to keep him rooted and do some tricky positioning along with some AoE for the beetles he spawns. You also wanted to bring some Shadow Absorb potions to aid you. To make these fights easier, you could get some buffs from allies before engaging. As long as they stay out of the fight, the demon won't despawn. The biggest trick I recall though was that you could actually have another hunter kill them for you. As long as you were within range and didn't enter the demon's aggro list, you would get credit for the kill, so there were some tricks if you were really having trouble with it. But completing the quest gave you the ancient rune etched stave, and as I mentioned, you combined this with the sinew to give you the bow. Now initially, you could only have the bow or the staff, and you switched between them by using them, just like the thunder strike slash shadow strike slash vendor strike polearm. As you would imagine, most people went with the bow unless you wanted to be one of those melee hunters. This was later changed to where you just talked to the ancient again to get both the bow and the staff. The best of both worlds. The bow had a slow 2.9 speed, some ranged attack power, and crit. And the staff was a nice stat stick with 2% crit, some attack power against demons, nature resistance, stamina, and intellect. Remember, hunters did also use mana back then. It was changed to focus in Cataclysm. The models are quite interesting, I think. The bow has a very nature-y elven look to it, as well as the staff. Although, it does look like someone just tied three sticks together. A good side is that it's easy to cosplay. Just go in your backyard. 
but it did also have a native green glow to it, which was neat. These are of epic quality, so you can of course transmog them if you obtained them before their removal. Two of my favorite items in the game because they were tied behind such a cool challenge, and like I said, it was sort of a status symbol for a little while there. Like, whoa, that guy knows what he's doing. Well, that's what I thought at least. Like I said, you could cheese it, so make of that as you will. But if you didn't get them back then, there do exist some Lochdalar knockoffs that you can still get. There's a reward from a druid quest that looks similar, and another one called Folly Spear from a quest in the Arathi Highlands. And to get the glow, you just transmog the Breath of Yulan enchant. As for Rockdalar, similar to Thunder Fury, this was remade as an artifact appearance for marksman hunters in four different colors. A cool little callback to a cool, classic weapon. So, that's pretty much it for this episode. That's the story with Rockdalar and Lockdalar in a nutshell. As always, I hope you found it interesting or entertaining. Like it if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next episode of the Azeroth Arsenal. Peace. Farewell for now, mortals. We hope you enjoyed today's video. See you again soon.